what's on your mind today, goddess? Well, I got a question for you. Sure. Um, well, more so of an opinion, opinionated question. What, how, how, what is your take on reparations, sir? What is my take on reparations? I support reparations. As a Garveyite, we believe in reparations. As a psychologist, though, I must caution that there should be restoration before they can rep yes re no rest restore restoration restore. before there can be reparations and what i mean by that is we as african people have some home cleaning and home repairing that we need to do that if we do not do it and we receive any type of restitution for the wrongs that have been systematically and historically reaped upon us, that restitution will almost be useless if we don't first have some restoration. In other words, most of what is to be done for us must be done by us, and it doesn't mm -hmm. cost money. So for example, mending the relationship between a black man and a black woman no amount of money will pay for that. We have to do that work. Making the black community unity, restoring unity and trust, we have to do that work. No amount of money is going to do that. Helping us get loyal to one another, healing us of our pain, we have to do that. Implementing a system of black community justice, that needs to be done before any payout takes place. If we don't, carry out the internal reparations before the external reparations are given, those external reparations will be useless. Because if you don't change the way we think about each other, anything we get from the power structure, we will give right back to the power structure. If we become $20 billion richer today, Mercedes Benz, Nike, the Korean hair care shop, Timberland, they will become $20 billion by the richer by the following morning. So I believe in reparations. I support it. But when are we going to start doing the work necessary to prepare ourselves so that when we receive the reparations, we can put it to good use? Thank you. Thank you. Peace and love, brother. I, 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 I understood everything you said. Thank you, Queen. And again, Please spread the word. Let every black parent you know in Minnesota know, because I don't get to Minnesota that often. So please let them know. Last time I was there was for Black History Month, St. Paul, and that was about four years ago. So it's been a while, and I'm looking forward to coming back. And I'm coming back during the warm month. I'm normally in Minnesota when it's uh, chilly. So I'm going to be there when it's kind of warm. So let them know. Mark their calendar, June 27th, Minneapolis. Make sure they register online. And if you know of any talk shows, radio shows, newspapers who would like to do an interview to help get the word out, please let me know. Definitely. I know North High School would probably like to have you on as a um, okay. North High School. You should de definitely I'll talk to them about that. Let me know, Queen. Let me know. Send me a text, email, inbox, whatever you need to do. All right. All right, Thank Queen. Stay blessed. All right. You too. See, brothers and sisters, when we talk about reparations, when we talk about reparations, when we talk about reparations, we have to understand something. Nothing outside of you can ever do more for you than what you can do for yourself. Okay, we have to get out of this oversimplification of the damage that we suffer from. When you try to reduce our damage to simply needing money, then you are dishonoring the ancestors in the struggle that we have been to. You cannot undo what has been done with money alone. Of course we can use money. Of course we need resources. But let's not ignore the fact that we already have enough resources financially to do what we need to do. We already have enough. If we were serious we would have already done what we needed to do. Don't make reparations an excuse. I believe in reparations, but don't make reparations an excuse for why you don't do anything right now where you are. What if reparations takes another 100 years? 
Are you telling me black people are unable to do anything for themselves until we finally get reparations? Are you telling me that? Because if you're telling me that, I'm going to have to significantly disagree with you. I'm going to have to significantly disagree with you if you're telling me that we need reparations before there can be restoration. If you're telling me there can be no internal reparations until there is external reparations, I'm going to call you a hypocrite. I'm going to call you a fraud. I'm going to call you a con artist. Okay? I'm going to call you insincere. There's no way you're going to tell me that we need the white man to jumpstart our liberation. Because when you say we need reparations before we can do anything, if you say we need reparations before we can do anything, you're telling me that we need the United States government to jumpstart the liberation struggle. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Because that means you're putting white power in charge of black freedom. That means you're putting white power in charge of black freedom. That means you're putting white power in charge of black freedom. Tap in. Tap in. Is reparations going to stop the black man from dating outside of his race? Is reparations going to stop the black man from marrying outside of his race? Is reparations going to stop the black man from dishonoring the black woman? I'm telling you, we suffer from an intergenerational psychological trauma that cannot be undone with money alone. We suffer from an intergenerational psychological trauma that cannot be undone with money alone. Tap in. Tap in. We talking reparations today. Tap in. I want to hear what you're going to do with the reparations money. Tap in. Long Beach, California, March the 7th, Black Parent Training. Long Beach, California, March the 7th, Black Parent Training. Let's go to Jalen. Brother Jalen going once. Brother Jalen going twice. Hey, what's up, Dr. Moore? Brother Jalen, yeah. good. Where you at in the world? Hartsville, Tennessee, the volunteer state. Hartsville, yeah, Tennessee. Home yes, of the sir. Clan. Yes, sir. You uh, got just How far are you from was... versus Texas? Well, you ain't close to uh, Texas. Well, I mean, I got family in Mississippi. My cousin Gina, she lives there. Because we got a black parent training in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, April the 18th. I was trying to see. What about North Carolina? How far are you from Charlotte? Uh, I'm a couple hours away. I'm in the Tennessee area, but I mean, that doesn't mean I don't have a car. Got me an 86 S10. I can get where I need to go to, sir. Yes, sir. You might got to come to Charlotte on March the 28th. But let me ask you, Jalen, we're talking about be able to ask anything that you want, but we're talking about reparations. What is one yes, thing sir. That black people need to do? Once we get out to well, first of all, what do you think reparations should include? They you think it should include? Or give me something we should do once we get it. Shoot. The way I look at it, sir, I'm not a parent. I'm just a young black youth. I'm 25 years old and I'm single. But yes. my thing is, sir, before we need reparations, we just need to heal ourselves and get conscious of who we are inside. Yes, before we ask for the white dollars, we need to ask ourselves who we are as people, period. Now, I don't, now don't get me wrong, we do... For all that we've done for this country, all the blood, sweat, tears. How, I mean, I served in the National Guard for a couple of years. My cousin, my family, her, my grandmother, her, uh, four out of five of her brothers served in World War II. You know, I mean, everything that we've done to build this country. Yes, sir. Yeah, as far as reparations, yeah, absolutely. Because it's long overdue. At the end of the day, before we just put all of our – that's the thing with me and betting. I, I like to hedge my bets. You, you feel me? So before we just place all of our our uh, eggs in one basket, let's yeah. go ahead and be proactive and get our own dollars. So that way, worse comes to worse, at the end of the day, we still got in our pocket. 
and we're just not out here left hanging to dry. You get what I'm saying, brother? Yes. Yes. I follow you. I follow you, brother. What's going on in Tennessee? What's the biggest challenge for our people in Tennessee, brother? Talk to me about Tennessee. Where, how the brothers well, going in Tennessee? Uh, my people are cool. I mean, I'm just trying to get into politics. I mean, I just look at this, sir. I mean, I've been thinking about possibly running. Actually, I've been possibly thinking about running for mayor of my town, actually. i got some legal things to do and legal things to take care of, but once I do that, you know, I've been thinking about, like, for real, trying to get into the politics and, like, invest in trying to invest the, my town's money into our community, especially the black community, especially AKA the Hill. Bring more black people to the Hill. Because back in the day, there used to be nothing but black people on the Hill. Now it's mostly white people on the Hill. You feel me? Yes. Yes. And I mean, open up a youth center. Use uh, what old abandoned, what used to be the, the uh, shoebox factory as a, a community center for the kids. Teen center, you know what I mean? Put ping yes. pong, uh, pool tables, set up, I don't care if it's just Xbox 360, something like that. A couple of flat screen TVs where you can have at least local channels. You know, just a place for kids to hang out. Yes. Basketball goal, all that good stuff. Yes, sir. Thank you for that, my no, brother. Sir. Thank you for that. I'm going to uh, tap into a few more people, brother. But uh, check my website, drumarjohnson.com, and see which black parent training uh, you might want to come on to. And even if you don't have any good ones, you still need that information. So we want to see you at one of them, my brother. Yeah, and please, brother, please, please, brother, I want to see you on the Breakfast Club once again soon, soon. Uh, not okay. We <laughs> might, you know, DJ Envy. He's not a Doctor Umar fan, but we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Really, I believe Charlemagne. It feels like well, Charlemagne. Folks, we tough though. Charlemagne is my dude. Charlemagne is all right, but Envy yeah. was uh, Envy was very uh, DJ Envy's oh, body baby. language on the fourth interview wasn't very. Uh, inviting but uh we'll see what we can do. maybe he was having a bad day because he was all right the previous three interviews so we'll see yeah i mean everybody, everybody did some personal things it might not be necessarily against you everybody's got their days you know which is yeah. understandable yeah we give him a benefit of the doubt he's still our brother mm -hmm. we give him the benefit of the doubt and that's why i love right, what I'm you right. say sir yeah well, the, that's why i love about you sir even if you're not for us we need to be for our people either way God bless you, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Be safe, Jack. Be safe. As all. All right. All right, brothers and sisters. If you live in Detroit, Dr. Umar Johnson is doing a special Black History Month close out Q and A conversation with the Detroit community tonight, fifteen hundred East State Fair Avenue, fifteen hundred East State Fair Avenue here in Detroit. I am in Detroit. I spoke at Warren Community College today. Thank you to all the brothers and sisters who came out to Warren Community College today. Warren County Community College. I enjoyed it. I absolutely enjoyed it. Okay, we got Sincere, the author, tapping in. Sincere, the author. Peace, my brother. My brother. Peace, my brother. I'm in New York City right now, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. Well, you know we got the historic black parent training Saturday okay. in White Plains, New York, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Black okay. parent boot camp. So let all the parents you know out there who are having trouble with their sons and boys. White, and boys. White Plains, New York? White Plains, New York. If you order my website. DrJohnson.com, okay. you can register right there. We got White Plains on Saturday and Source of Knowledge Bookstore in Newark on Sunday. Both okay. trainings are the same. They are absolutely okay. identical. You can come to Jersey or you could come to New York, but they need to come to one of them. Okay. Hey, hey I, I, I wanted to tap in with you. Uh, first of all, man, I want to let you know that I'm a Dr. Umar follower, man. I follow you. I follow your you, teachers. You understand what I'm saying? And I, and I support you. Brother. I sincerely Appreciate support it. you. I don't agree 100% with everything. That's all right. But
but but you know, like I, I I love the way you don't hold you don't hold your tongue. Yes, sir. You know, and you and you and you stand firm on what you believe in. Yes, sir. And, and I really, you know, I want to have a conversation with you, but I really don't want to do it in this forum. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Because yes. I don't want to I don't want to make it seem like I'm 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 you know trying to you know diminish anything that you're trying to do. Uh huh. I, I, ha I have some concerns that I really want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. That I really you know think that when you in your in, in the position that you're in, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a lot of targets on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I don't want you to be an easy target, brother. Yes, sir. So when I see little things that I feel like I could cr critique, I, w I don't want to critique you in the forum in front of everyone. Uh huh. But I would like to have a conversation with you if that's possible. Yes, sir. Always possible. You no. Know? Yeah. So how how would I go about doing that? Uh, you want to take my number? Sure. You, you gonna to give it to me over the line here? Yeah, my number public. Okay. okay. Uh, two one five. Okay. Nine eight nine. Nine eight nine. Nine eight five eight. Nine eight five eight. And I know yes, you're busy uh, traveling out around the world, getting getting the word out there. And uh, so, what's a good time that I can really reach you? I only need like ten minutes of your time. Anytime. I mean, really, literally, anytime. anytime. You know, because okay. I'm always okay. helping okay. parents with their children, so I ain't got no set office hours. My whole life is the office hours. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yes, hey, sir. man, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate Thanks you tapping me in. Man. I'm going to be in contact with you, man. My name is Sincere. Will do. Appreciate hey, my brother. brother. Please, 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 brother. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. All right. I really appreciated that brother for the way he withheld his criticism and critique until we speak privately. I would not have minded if he went into it publicly because I don't have anything to hide, but I appreciate the respect that he demonstrated for me right there. I really did appreciate that. Tap on in brothers and sisters, reparations. I tell you what I would do before I give any black folks any type of resources from reparations. You cannot get reparations if you're not with a black woman. Anybody who's dating out the race do not get reparations. I'm being straight serious about that. You do not get any reparations if you don't live in a black community. I'm serious about that. You're not getting reparations if you have a weave or a perm or blonde hair. Any type of European behavior, you don't get reparations. Any type of European behavior, you don't get reparations. That's the Dr. Umar plan. Prod by Mahdi. Going once. Prodigy by Mahdi. Hello, hello, I'm screaming. <laughs> I can't see you, beautiful. Where you at? Let me see that beautiful African face. Okay, but my face looks crazy right I see now. Your eyebrows. I see your eyebrows, but I don't see you. Stop being I look crazy. I can't, I can't no, see my don't. face right now. No, you I don't. You look beautiful. <laughs> Show me that face. Cut it out. I, I swear Cut to God. Cut it out. Show me the face. I swear to God. Hold on. Let me put my Show me real fast. Show me real fast. Okay. Today. Show me real fast. Let me see. Okay, real I'll fast. show real fast. Okay, Three seconds. On. Okay. All right. That's it. Where you at in the world, Queen? Where you at? Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes. We are currently looking for a training site for the Black Parent Training in Cincinnati. It was supposed to be in Cleveland, but the haters got it canceled. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's on your mind today? Talk to me. Okay. We talk about like, reparations. Look like Chili from TLC. I'm going to call You're you. You're lying. <laughs> what's on your mind, Chili? Okay. Reparations or whatever, right? Reparations. What do you think we should do with it? Why can't you give reparations if you wear weave? Because if you're wearing weave, you're going to take that money to maintain that weave. And our pay for our ancestors' pain should not be used to promote European lifestyle. European? Why is it European? When you wear a weave, why do you wear the weave? 
I personally don't wear weave, but why do people, women wear weave? Why, do why not wear weave? weave? It's not because they're trying to be white women, though. No, no, no. I didn't ask you that. I said, why do they wear weave? Tell me why black women wear weave. Okay. Black women wear weave because they want to and because that's that's all they no, know. No, you didn't ask the question. You didn't, you're, 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 you're being in denial. <laughs> Stop being in denial, Chili. <laughs> chili. Okay. Know the answer. Why do black women wear weave? Be honest now. Don't be defensive. Be honest. Black women wear weave because it's a part of culture. It's a part of whose culture? Our culture. So let me get this straight. The Koreans dominate the weave industry, and you're telling me that the Europeans are selling your culture. I mean, the, the, the Koreans are selling you your culture. Is that what I'm hearing? There's black, there's black um, owned shops that sell weed. It's not Listen, only Korean Where do shops. they get their weed from? Where do they get the weed from, Chili? <laughs> it's not white people. They get the weed from the Europeans. Excuse me, from the Koreans. They get the weed from the Koreans. Why? Depending black... on, depending on. Ninety-nine percent of all the people in the black community, <laughs> other than the black community, do you agree on that? No, wait, can you re say that for me one more time? 99 all the wheat sold in the black community was obtained from somebody who's not black. It was, it's not coming from Africa. It's not coming from Jamaica. Where is the wheat coming from? Korea. Korea. <laughs> all right, I'm, I gotta hop off right quick. It was good talking to you, though, okay? All right, kid chili. Be safe. Chili was off the hook. Chili said weave is part of black culture. Imitating another people is part of black culture. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. Beauty.com. Go on once. Beauty.com. Go on twice. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the I hair. Let me see you, Beauty. Stop hiding. Let me see you. Oh, I'm not sure I can be called Beauty. You're beautiful. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. If you have I mean, you just had, we just had a conversation about the hair, and I wanted to try to be a little bit more. Wait, 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 wait. Let me see you. Let me see you. You're absolutely gorgeous. Okay, where are you, by the way? I'm in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I will be in Pittsburgh Saturday, June the 6th for the Pennsylvania State Black Parent Training. So make sure you spread the word. And if you know oh, definitely. the radio show, tell them to get in contact with me. Dr. Umar needs you to interview him about the upcoming Pennsylvania State Black Parent Know Your School Rights Training which will be in Pittsburgh on Saturday, June the 6th. So, so I'll definitely, I will definitely keep that posted and spread the word. I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about the reparations and in, in, in terms of hair. Yes. Um, and so I heard the young lady talking before me. And I just want to remind you, while we're talking to our, our African queens and our women, I, I agree with you, but I... Are you? I want you to remember to, to do things with love. Do things with love. Tell me more about that. How would you like right, so me when to you, so, <laughs> I'm so nervous. So um, okay, there are for... women who, there are, there are African American women, African queens, um, however you want to refer to to us, but there are women who wear weaves, there are women who wear their hair and everything in between. And we deal with um, self-esteem issues either way you, you look at it, whether you're wearing your hair or a weave. And I think that from our African kings, I think from our men, it just doesn't go both ways. So so I think the more we are encouraged to be ourselves, because this is, you're talking to somebody who I can wear a weave. I don't have to, 
I can wear my hair, I can perm it, I don't have to. Mm -hmm. I love my people regardless, you know, and I know that that's how you feel as well. And I understand what you're saying with the reparations. I definitely do. But I just want to remind you that so many of our men are not like you in terms of loving us for who we are. Mm -hmm. You can look me in my face and say that you're beautiful. But so many of our men do not look us in our faces and say that you're beautiful. They're looking at everything else. We have so much work to do. Keep going. Why you stop? I'm agreeing with you. Keep going. I thought, why you stop? I thought you were going to keep dropping the knowledge. That's very I just powerful. Feel like... That's very powerful, though. So let me ask you a question, because I agree with you totally. Dr. Umar sees all African women as queens. He loves to see them Thank in you. their natural state. A lot of our men are not of the same mindset. They want to see our exactly. sisters in an artificial state because they don't appreciate the natural beauty of the black woman. If most black boys are raised by single mothers, what is the, what is the mistake that the single black mother is doing to give rise to so many adult black males who don't want to see natural black women? In other words, and don't get me wrong, men are responsible too. I don't want to make this a mother's issue. I'm just asking you because you are a queen. What, what do you notice that black women are not doing with their sons that makes it so easy for black boys to abandon black women for someone else? Where, where's the disconnect? We are, we, are not, we are not showing them exactly what they need to see, and that is our, us in our essence. I agree, if that's what you're saying. I, I, I yes. think that we are... We're not showing them who we are, um, but I, I, I'm traditional, and I'd be willing to follow in the lead of <laughs> our men who want to, to love that part of us. But, and like I said, I have no problem. You can look at my profile. I have no problem doing it all with my hair, but I just don't feel like it's – I feel like what you're saying is powerful, and I feel like it, it's, it's honorable, but, but not many people think the way that you do, and it starts with our men. I'm a woman who would be willing to follow such suit, but it does oh. not happen that way. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I want you to take my number, Queen, because if you're able to locate some folks who can do that interview, I want you to be able to text me and say, Doc, I got you an interview. I'll do that. What is it? Uh, 215. Okay. 989. Okay. 9858. Two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So make sure you lock me in, and if you come across anything, shoot me a text. But I want to see you there, June six. It's only a few months away. It's going to come quickly. Okay, I'll do that. Right, love Thanks for talking to me. Appreciate you. I love a well-spoken, non-emotional black woman who can make her point articulately without a lot of head shaking, neck snapping, and eye rolling. I can really appreciate that. That sister was very well spoken. Those are the type of black women I want at the Anna Douglas Amy Agarvey Academy. That's what I want. We're going to have the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy for the boys. And right across the street will be the Anna Douglas Amy Garvey Academy for the girls. Remember, we have two schools in Delaware, two schools, the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy and right across the street, the Anna Douglas and Amy Garvey Academy. And the sister who just spoke would be the type of sister I would want at the girls school. Tap in. Omni Gassidi. Omni Gassidi going once. Hello. Beautiful. Where you at in the world, princess? I'm in Hollywood. Hollywood, California. I will be there next week. Are you aware? Okay, no, I was not aware. Where will you be? Okay, on Saturday, March the 7th, mm -hmm. I will be giving my Black Parent Know Your School Rights Boot Camp. 
in Long Beach. Okay. It is nine until nine. Let all the parents know they can register on my website for that. Okay, cool. That's 12 hours. You're going to learn everything there is to know, special ed, discipline, mental health, ADHD, everything. That's the boot camp, right? All right. Then the very next day on Sunday, March the 8th, we will be at the Blessed Love Cultural Center, mm -hmm. 1404 Vernon Ave. 1404 Vernon Ave, Sunday, mm -hmm. March the 8th, 4 p.m. Okay, cool. And you get your tickets for that from Blessed Love. And you can Google Blessed Love Gift Shop. Get your tickets from the Blessed Love Gift Shop, 1404 Vernon Ave for Sunday. And for the Black Parent Training on Saturday, you get those tickets off my website. So we got Long Beach and Los Angeles back-to-back. All right, cool. What is your opinion on this whole hair controversy, my queen? I see you're natural. Why can't more sisters go natural? What's going on? Well, um, I totally agree with you. I think that I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> Take your time. You're doing well. A lot of women, they are... It's these beauty standards, like you're saying, these European beauty standards. What they don't understand is when you're wearing straight hair, we look back and we see in his story, we're not allowed. There are times when we're not allowed to wear our natural hair. But when our story, our natural hair has so much meaning to it. And there's always the excuse like, put your hair in the slow wind and be braided and grow faster. Actually, that's not true because when your hair is like fine and twist and it's down and you're allowing those oils to blow through your hair, you're going to get growth. So I really agree with the natural hair thing. And I like the fact that you said with reparations, if you're going to be spending $400 on sew-ins, how is that putting good use to the black dollar? Right. But speaking of reparations, um, I really like the, the process of preaching reparations. And I have, a two, I have two questions for you. One being... There's like this issue to me of white fragility. And I see people, I see white people who want to share with us the fact that they are, you know, conscious of the fact that we deserve better and they see, they understand that we deserve more. But it's this white fragility thing. They don't understand what to do, how to approach it. And I want to know if you have any tips about that. Well, let me say this I don't think there's anything we can do to address white fragility because I believe it to be a legitimate concern. And what I mean by that is the number one cause of racism, oppression, and segregation is the fact that the European, like everyone else, wants to preserve himself. Right. Black people are the possessors of the dominant gene. We have the dominant DNA on the planet. Right. If we intermingle freely with them, then their gene pool can be removed from the earth. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I understand why he has to practice segregation. I do not excuse his mistreatment of us, but I understand segregation because for me, segregation is not mistreatment from a certain perspective. It is self-preservation for him. As African people, we don't need to practice segregation because there's no other group of people on earth who can reproduce us out of existence. Right. But we can reproduce everyone else out of existence, which is part of the reason why we're so open to everybody, because genetically speaking, we have nothing to lose. However, they have a lot right. to lose. So you can't address white fragility because it is a legitimate concern. There's nothing you can do about it. They are absolutely right to be paranoid about being eliminated by virtue of black reproduction. I like that. <laughs> okay, cool. 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 And I, mean, I also just like to say, I really, I really um, appreciate how you fear no man. That's something that I struggle with. And me being 
um, beginning my journey in pan Africanism and freedom fighting, fearing the man and like understanding that you have to be cautious, but also understanding that you're protected and yes, your your guys have you and all that. And get of that so. Absolutely, we're born with a certain destiny, and you're going to meet that destiny one way or the other. So if it is in your chart to leave this world early, you're going to leave this world early. Mm -hmm. If it's in your chart to leave this world at 100 years old, you're going to leave this world as a, at 100 years old. Look at Queen Mother Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman probably had the most dangerous job ever for a black person. Mm -hmm. She lived to almost be 100 years old. So she is living proof that you can face down danger every single day and still live to be a century. Right. On the flip side, we can look at Emmett Till or Trayvon Martin, rest in peace, and look how young, Tamir Rice, look how young they left us. Mm -hmm. So my whole thing is we have to constantly discipline ourselves against fear, okay? Because fear is a natural human reaction to threat. Everyone has it, but you have to discipline yourself so the fear does not control you. You follow. And that's an everyday struggle for me. It's going to be an everyday struggle for you because as humans, we can't help but feel fearful sometimes. But the key is to not let your fear rule your life. And to right. be black people, too many of us allow our fear of Europeans to run <laughs> our life. And that's the problem. Well spoken. I'm going to see you on the 7th and 8th, princess. See you on the 7th and 8th. All right now. God Good bless. Chat. All right, sweetie. I'm jealous of my young brothers. I'm jealous of my late 20 and 30-year-old brothers out there because y'all have a lot of beautiful women in your age group. Y'all have a lot of beautiful women in your age group. Those last two sisters who tapped in, last three sisters who tapped in, very, very beautiful. And they appear to be in that late 20s, 30-year-old age. They seem to be between 25 and 35. So you young brothers need to get it together and snatch one of those beautiful queens. As for me, I'm looking for a little bit older queen. I'm looking for a little bit older queen. Okay? 35 to 45, maybe a few years older, you know, 46, 47, 35 to 45, though. That's my, that's my range. That's my range. But for you young brothers, go get you one of those beautiful young princesses out there. Settle down, get married, build you a family, okay, and make it happen. Go ahead and tap in. Go ahead and tap in. Oh, I'm trying to tap in. What's going on? It's not letting me tap in. What's going on here? Nah, those those sisters was well spoken. So we got some good young sisters. Everybody's not trying to be Cardi B brothers. Everybody's not trying to be Cardi B. You can't tell me that all of our sisters in their 20s and 30s want to be Cardi B. It's not true. You just heard from three of them in a row. Very beautiful. Very well spoken. Okay, they ain't got on the tightest pants. They ain't got on fake eyelashes. They was all natural. You can get you a decent sister in your age group. Problem is you keep trying to meet them at the club and the concert. Stop looking for women at the club and the concert, brother. If you're only looking for your queen at the club and the concert, you're not going to find her. Meet her at the lecture. Go to the library. Go to the community town hall meeting. Go to the school board meeting. Stop trying to meet a queen at a concert in a club. That's the mistake you're making because you're only looking in a certain place that attracts a certain woman. Go somewhere else. Would I date a woman who's 50 years old? I could. I could. 
cookie jar need to be 35, but I could. I can't tap in. What's going on with the tap in? My tap in not working, y'all. My tap in not working. Somebody else try to tap in. I got to start over my tap in. <laughs> 